Hello, this is Bobby Grow. Welcome to another Always Reforming podcast. This will this will be a short one, like I always say, and it will be though. Um, I'm going to talk about Tyler Vela in this one. I don't know a lot about Tyler. I I have heard him before on YouTube, um, engaging in some uh, YouTube social media debates, theological debates. He's reformed, and the venue he was speaking in uh that i that i came across with him speaking in was with reference to provisionism uh some people might think of that as arminianism but it's it's different a little bit but anyway that's really my only exposure to him i wasn't impressed with what he was saying and how he was communicating or anything like that at that point so i just quit listening but, and that was, I don't know, that, that was probably a year ago. So anyway, I just heard that he has renounced the faith, he's renounced Christianity, and he denies now the, de- the de- deity of Christ, the Trinity. He calls Jesus, he, th- he thinks Jesus, if he has to use, as he says, the L- Lewisian trivium, he puts Jesus in the lunatic category now. So he really went the whole way in his rejection of the faith. And he said he's been dealing with this for like the last two years. and uh, But because it was, the word was getting out more to the public, he felt like he should make a public statement and confession of a deconverted Faith, as they call it nowadays. So, um, so I just kind of want to respond to that just really briefly. I might do a longer one of these later on this same issue, but uh, there's a lot of this kind of so-called a deconversion happening. So there's there's like almost a, a little subculture that's developed among particularly evangelical younger youngish christians not they're not always young but that's who the majority of them seem to be you know like 30s millennials uh there's of course um younger and older as well but it just seems like that's really the the age range although josh harris who also deconverted he's i think he's like my age more so he's like gen x Derek Webb, you have, I don't know, you had Rachel Held Evans. You know, she didn't actively repudiate Christianity, although she did repudiate evangelicalism in favor of progressivism to the point that it didn't resemble any kind of orthodox Christian belief at that point. But anyway, yeah, there's just a lot of this going on. And so it seems almost like it's created an on-ramp for people to take uh, if they have doubts or anything like that. And of course, you know, like t- like Tyler, um, they don't just fade away. <laughs> they need to announce it publicly for some reason. They say it's because they're public figures or something. I'm... Tyler doesn't have that high of a profile, I don't think, publicly. I don't think most people have ever heard of him, have ever heard of him, except in the YouTube debate culture and in a niche part of that as well. So I don't necessarily understand the reasoning behind going public unless you're attempting to draw attention to yourself and to kind of hop on that bandwagon that's been circling the evangelical world now for quite a while and announce that you too have deconverted and um and so i don't know i'm skeptical of that i'm suspicious of that kind of approach to this kind of stuff where where these people feel like they have to it's part of i guess it's part of their coming out right it's 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 that kind of um like valid they're self validating themselves when they do this and that they're making it real for themselves, I guess, when they do this publicly that 
it's some sort of burden that they feel like they can get off their chest or something like that when they share it with the world. So I don't know. To me, it all it does is it gives them a higher profile. Tyler Vela is w- way more well-known right now than he ever was as an internet apologist. So there is that part to it. And I, to me, to deny that is naive. So and even if he says that's not why he's doing this and he does say that, well, I mean, okay, I don't buy that necessarily. I'm not saying that he hasn't deconverted, but I'm saying the way that some of these people go about making a statement about their deconversion, uh, they know that it's going to elevate their profile. So there's that. But I listened to Vela's uh, like coming out podcast. It's like 27 minutes long, I think. I just listened to it last night, and yeah, it's sad to listen to. It's he's clear he's clearly uh, confused about things as far as uh, like the his sense or need to abandon Christianity in its totality, based upon his own theological. Uh, I almost said indoctrination, but it kind of is that. Just his own theological orientation, though, as a Reformed Christian. And so it seems as if he... This is why I'm skeptical of Tyler and what he's saying, like his reasoning for leaving the faith. And it doesn't matter, you know, like, I mean, yeah, if I'm skeptical or not skeptical, it doesn't matter, of course, it doesn't mean it's not real or anything like that but to me there's got to be there's something more going on and i don't know what it is of course it could be attention i don't know that would be kind of superficial but living in an online world is conditions us to be superficial so maybe it is all about attention i don't know but to me, there's something deeper because when you listen to Tyler Vela talk about his reasons for abandoning Christianity in totality, in its totality, uh, it just doesn't, it's not coherent. Uh, he talks about, he, had a, he was divorced, I guess, two years ago, sounds like. So he says that was a catalyst for leading him it wasn't the reason he says but it was a catalyst um which which led him to where he's at now and so he says yeah he went of course that was a hard hard thing to go through and he was begging god for peace for comfort and he said he never received that comfort from god so that kept gnawing at him he said he uses the you know just a human analogy of a parent-child relationship, and if, if he's if his child is hurting, as he was noting, and he could do something to help his child to not hurt, then of course, as a loving father, he would do that. He said he's Tyler. Then of course, by way of that analogy, applies that to God, and since God didn't show up in a noticeable way in comforting Tyler in whatever way uh, Tyler was, uh, whatever kind of comfort Tyler was in need of, um, since God didn't show up in the time frame and in the way that Tyler apparently expected him to, um, he allowed that kind of bitterness, I guess, to take over in his life. He didn't say it like that, of course. But to me, that sounds like he became bitter towards God. So th- that's one reason, he said. Another reason was just his understanding of God from the Reformed um, position, with particular reference to the atonement. 
And of course, he he said he basically makes it sound like all of Christianity holds to this idea that God, the Father, in His wrath against you know fallen humanity, needs to be placated, and so God sends His Son, and He he sacrifices His Son, and His wrath is quenched, and so. Tyler says that's that's like I can't for I can't follow a god like that. I can't worship a god like that. So that was another reason that he has rejected the Christian god. But of course, that's a matter of a theological position. There's lots of of ways to think about God in a god world relationship. A god world relation to us in Christ that does not involve thinking of God and his wrath towards sin as needing to be placated, as if he's a pagan deity from the ancient Near East. That's not the only way to conceive of the Christian God. In fact, it's not a good way at all to conceive of the Christian God. And yet, Tyler lifts that up. Of course, that's what he was taught. But apparently, Tyler... And this, is, again, is why I'm skeptical, suspicious. He just allows that to be like the exhaustive position, like totalitar of Christianity, like through all the centuries. Like all Christians have maintained that that view of God and his wrath and atonement and him being placated, that that is just, just is the Christian way of thinking of a God world relation in the atonement. But it's it's not at all. Like that's what I've been trying to show for years through the presentation of what we what we've called evangelical Calvinism, what I'm now calling Athanasian Reform theology. That's not at all what the atonement entails in a God world relation. And so it's unfortunate that Tyler <laughs> didn't do his due diligence. And to me then, he's using his, just his own experience, his understanding of the theology he he received, was taught, was indoctrinated into as like the basis, or as a basis, I guess, but a significant one for his reasoning in walking away from Christianity in total to the point now where he's he denies the deity of Jesus Christ, he denies the Trinity, he calls Jesus a lunatic. And so that's why I'm suspicious. It's it's very suspicious to me. Like to me there's some underlying reasons that he's not being transparent about. Maybe he doesn't even know what those are yet himself either. But um he didn't do his due, his due diligence. He has to know, I would hope, maybe not though, that there are, are other ways to think, conceive of God that compete with what he has been taught and in fact critique it at its very core. And as I would argue from God's self-revelation in Jesus Christ, that we have a filial God, a relational God, a familial God, a God whose life is defined by koinonia, by a coherence of eternal triune fellowship among the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. He is a God of love. He is love. Tyler, his understanding of God is that he's a God of jurisprudence, of the juridical, of the forensic, of the mercantile, of the contractual. And then he, in a sweeping way, has used that as a reason for his abandonment of Christianity. And again, to me that just seems really unwise. If in fact he's, if in fact that's really a, a reason, because like I just was noting, there's other doctrines of God out there 
and they're classical it, by, by way of ped pedigree that actually compete with the doctrine of God that he was taught in his, you know, reformed classical Calvinist theology that he's received. And so, again, I think that's, it makes me suspicious. Because if he was really doing his due diligence, if he really was seeking to know who God is, then he would have spent, I, I would think, more time um, researching that. If it's really, if that's really a reason, a significant reason why he can't be a Christian because of how God is has been pictured for him in that kind of God world relationship as a wrathful, angry God who again needs to be placated by some sort of bloodlust sacrifice, which is is a pagan conception of the atonement and has really nothing to do with a triune relational God is love understanding of the atonement as God takes our place, right? There is substitution. He takes our place in Christ. And Christ absorbs, he takes the he, the wrath of God, but God's wrath is not something that needs to be satiated by some bloodlust. God's wrath is because he hates sin, because he loves us first, that we might love him. That's what God's wrath is about, vis-a-vis -vis sin and fallen humanity. It's not a payment that has to be made like in some quid pro quo contractual relationship. It's that God loves us so much and hates sin because he knows how destructive it is to the good creation that he created in his image in Christ. And so that's a completely other way to think about and it's not very profound. I mean, it's profound, but it's not, that's not hard to imagine biblically at all. In fact, it's taught biblically. So anyway, I'm just really skeptical of this whole thing with Tyler Vela. I don't know what's really going on. And I think his reasons, I mean, yeah, I mean, those are subjective, of course. So I can't ultimately question that, but... <laughs> It just seems too almost flippant. Like there's something, he just, it's almost like he just doesn't want to believe in it anymore. It's almost, but why? I don't know. Is he just angry and bitter at God? I don't know. But it sounds like he is to me. And then he's using some excuses doctrinally, experientially, existentially to kind of rationalize it for himself or something. So anyway, these are just some off-the-top thoughts that I'm having about this, but I just wanted to register this for now and maybe talk a little bit more about the doctrine of God in relationship to what he said about the atonement a little bit later. So, all right, thank you.